This is Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Welcome to the podcast. Chris Graham and Scott German, and uh, we're, we're running a little later than normal for a post-UVA basketball game podcast, but we, we caught up, wanted to catch up with the uh, uh, the Duke-Florida State game. That game just ending as we're starting this podcast, and you, if you watch that game too, Duke winning on a three-pointer in the last second by Cam Reddish. We'll talk about that one later. We'll talk about the rest of the ACC a little later in this podcast. Let's start, though, Scott, with Virginia Clemson. Virginia, the 20-point win on the road, 12th straight road win in ACC play for for Virginia basketball. And, uh, Scott, your first impressions of this win down in Little John. Well, excuse me, Chris. Um, It's just another Virginia win, you know, a typical win. It wasn't pretty. At times, but in the end, Virginia uh, does what Virginia does. And, and basically, they just, at some point in the game, you know that defensively, they're just going to uh, suck the life out of their opponent. They're going to impose their will. And that's exactly what happened uh, today down in, uh, at Little John. You know, the game was early on. Virginia looked like they were going to walk away with it. And then Clemson got back in it. Uh, and then, you know, it was just like the switch went on again defensively for UVA. And they pulled away, you know, 20-point win. I, I think the game was a little closer than the final score indicated, but still, you know, a 20-point win is a 20-point win. It can't be the third play. Yeah, you know, and I'll disagree there. I don't think the game was, was, was any closer than 20 points. It felt like, now, yes, briefly Clemson got back in it. Now, let's talk about the guy that I think is the player of the game. I don't think there's any question who's the player of the game. It's Jay Huff. People like talking about Jay Huff. Jay only played 10 minutes in this game, but he scored 11 points. He had seven rebounds. But when he came in the game, it was a four-point game. His first shot, about a minute in, he made a three. He blocked a shot. He had a couple rebounds. But what he did offensively with that three, he had a couple of alley dunks. He got to the foul line. And uh, he got the attention of the Clemson defense. That that led to a couple of wide-open three-pointers. Ty Jerome buried one. DeAndre Hunter buried one. And in that first seven-minute stretch that Jay Huff was in the game, Virginia goes from a four-point lead to an 18-point lead, and the game's over at that stage. In a seven-minute stretch, he was plus 14 in that seven-minute stretch. And uh, Jay Huff, I mean, we've seen what Jay Huff can do when he's on the floor. He gets minutes. He hasn't gotten a lot of minutes. He's been getting more lately. But uh, Jay Huff was the difference in this game today. Oh, for sure. And, you know, little by little, we're really, I think we're really starting to see his emergence. Uh, um, you know, and, and it's, it's also, you know, Tony commented on it on the postgame show. Um, you know, he, he looked like he was a force on a, on a couple of uh, defensive possessions. Just his length uh, created some problems for Clemson. So, you know, hopefully, I won't go as far as to say that he's turned the corner. But he certainly does appear as though he's gaining a lot more confidence. You know, I would say I tweeted right. I guess it was the TV timeout uh, when Clemson actually cut it down to two uh, and had a couple three pointers that they missed that would have given them the lead. I tweeted that at that point, the only person really scoring for Virginia was uh, was uh, Kyle Guy. In fact, he just finished the 13 he had at halftime. But at that point, uh, Ty Jerome was one of seven from the field. Uh, DeAndre Hunter was one of four from the field, and I said if no one else steps up, Virginia's gonna lose this game. Uh, and 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 I expected either Ty or Hunter to step up, and Hunter did finish with 12 points, but it was Huff. And and what was interesting, I noticed this um, uh, when Virginia runs the offense with Huff in the game, it's very different than when any of the other bigs are in the game. Even Diakite, who's an effective scorer in the post, uh, not today. In fact, Diakite did not score today. 0 of two from the floor, zero points. But when Diakite and Salt are in the game playing in the four or five positions, they're setting screens, and they're setting them either baseline or they're setting a foul line wide. When Jay Huff's in the game, he sets his screens at the top of the key, and you, you'll see either Jerome or Guy particularly run off those screens with him at the top of the key. And then if, if the ball doesn't go to the guard off that screen, it goes to Huff at the top of the key. Well, you've got to guard him because he can make that three. Because he did, he made the three off, off of one of those plays. Uh, but then if he doesn't shoot the ball, he tends to do a dribble handoff to one of the guards. And when that happens, of course, your natural inclination is to go after Ty Jerome, go after Kyle Guy, keep them from getting open for a three. 
Well, on three of those plays, after he dribbled handoff and set a screen with that play, he runs to the rim for alley-oops. Two of those he threw down. One he got fouled on and made a free throw. And all of a sudden then, Clemson started worrying about Jay Huff on the alley-oop pass. Well, that's what led to those two open threes. They, they, they sagged off of Jerome and Hunter and left open threes. So just simply placing him at the top of the key opened the whole offense up. And, and that 20 points in seven minutes for a team that had 63 points in 40 minutes, you know, it's not just Huff scoring. It's Huff being on the floor and his athleticism, his ability to finish around the rim and hit a three. All those things together uh, were different. And as you noted, Scott, I mean, he, he, he held his own defensively. And, 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 slot, and, and Clemson's got some good inside players. Elijah Thomas is, a, is a, one of the better, uh, you know, one of the better bigs in the ACC. And, uh, and, and Huff, you know, did his job. He had seven rebounds. He had six defensive rebounds. And he had a blocked shot. He altered a couple of shots. So, yeah, I mean, I talk a lot about Jay Huff here, but I really think he was a difference in his game. And if he can play anything like this, you know, the rest of the season, give Virginia between, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes a game like this, Virginia is going to be really tough to beat down the stretch. Yeah, another offensive weapon, and I think this is just the, you know this is what makes this team so darn good, so much more versatile. Is that we have so many weapons, and you, you know you and I texted in the first half. I, I, I think my text to you it looked like we were sleepwalking a little bit there, and Jerome um, and Hunter were not playing. Neither of the two were playing well. But, you know, you almost know it's, a, it's just a matter of time before they get on track. But there's so many other weapons. Boxing Key had another solid game. And you're right. If Huck can give us this kind of play, you know, offensively, can give us 10 minutes. He, at this stage of his career, he doesn't have to play 18, 20 minutes a game. He needs to play an effective 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to be we're gonna be going almost unbeatable. I'd like to see he didn't get in the game to the second half, and of course he played ten of the last fifteen minutes of this game. I'd like to see him get in the game earlier, uh, down you know the next at least the next game Virginia Tech, who has one good big Harry Blackshear uh, that he can help with. You know, and, and and it's not a knock at all on Jack Salt. Jack Salt has been a valuable member of this program for four seasons, actually five if you count his redshirt season. Uh, but when Salt's out there and he played twenty one minutes today, he actually had seven points, three or five from the field, and eight rebounds. So credit to him. Uh, Key also had eight rebounds, talking about Braxton Key. But when Jack's out there, and you kind of saw the difference, after after uh, uh, after Huff went on the bench uh, at the uh, under nine minutes, after that seven minute stretch that he helped turn the game around, you know when Saul's out there setting screens, no one's no one's jumping out on him at the three point line because obviously he has a, he has trouble making free throws, and so you're not respecting him out there and. And really, the only thing he can do is is, is dive uh, to the basket, and he, he does that well. He also got an offensive foul called on him on one of his dives, and he he's got a hook shot. He can finish, you know, sometimes in the post, but but he's not the offensive weapon, certainly defensively and screen wise and everything else. But Virginia is different with with Huff out there, and and hopefully we'll see him some some more as as uh, as play goes on. Uh, you know, and I'll, and I'll say this too. Uh, kind of like Scott, we we noticed we know this about ourselves all the time. Twenty point win on the road against a team that has four senior starters played in the Sweet Sixteen last year, and uh, we're saying, well, you know, that wasn't a great effort. That's where we come. That, that's what we've come to expect now. Watching Virginia basketball, uh, we're finding <laughs> we're finding the faults. There were faults. Uh, you know, there were Clemson got to the foul line a lot in the first half, not as much second half. This two for five in the line in the second half. Uh, Clemson was able to hang around for a while. Virginia stagnated offensively for a long stretch in this game. Uh, but, you know, they, the one thing you noticed, Scott, defense doesn't go into slumps. And the defense, uh, you know, when Clemson has 43 at home, in what was a must-win game for Clemson, they were 0-2 in the ACC, uh, first home game. They, they could ill afford to fall to 0-3 like they are now. You expected the best effort out of this Clemson team. You kind of got it for about 25 minutes. But then when that run came on, it was over. Virginia Virginia won a game in an opposing gym where they needed the win desperately, had their football team in there, Dabo Swinney at halftime, everybody's emotional about everything else, and Virginia sucked the air out of that place with that big run. Yeah, Chris, I was following some of that on the Clemson that before. I'm not taking anything but my own win down there because he was breaking it. Second time in three years that we beat Clemson at home. On the same delay, the same 
day that they honored the football team for national championship. But um, they that game, um, they're playing Virginia fourth ranked team in the nation, some Paul number one team, and some other. I mean, big game, huge game for Clemson. And um, five minutes into the game, and, and and the upper deck was empty, and they opened the doors and let the students in three. So you can't get tickets away for Clemson basketball. It kind of tells you what the king and and you know, that valley. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway, good good win for Virginia. Uh, you know, I, I followed Virginia basketball for a long time, and I keep trying to think. Well, I've seen better basketball. I've seen better times, but you know, I, I clearly have come to realize this is the best basketball that the University of Virginia has ever played. This is the pinnacle of where we are in basketball. Hopefully we, we reach the pinnacle at the end of the season. But um, and you, you can take all four years of the Ralph era to me that was kind of a house of cards. Um, this is a this is a dynasty that Tony has built. And the great thing about this is that yeah, we may lose a couple of players next year to the NBA, but you know, if, if the foundation is there and we have Really got something special in Charlotte. Quick stat review, and then we'll talk some more. Uh, Virginia, 40.4% from the field, 23.57, but good shooting from three, 10 of 23, 43.5%. 46-36 rebound advantage for Virginia. Clemson, just 25.9% from the field, 14 of 54, just three of 19 from three-point range. Uh, And uh, points in the paint was interesting, 2018, just a, a slight advantage for Virginia there. Uh, Marquise Reed had 14 points for Clemson. Eight of those were free throws, though. Eight of 11. Uh, he was only three of 14 from the field. And so um, uh, Virginia clamping down defensively. And, you know, I, I've noted our tendency to look give force in the mouth, as the old saying goes. Uh, you know, I was – now I'll, I'll transition and we can start talking about that Florida State-Duke game we just watched. We'll kind of go around the ACC now. I was starting to devalue that Virginia win over Florida State last week. Because, well, then Florida State struggled to beat a bad Miami team at home on Wednesday. They only beat them by six. It was a two-point game in the last 30 seconds. And uh, and so thinking, well, you know, maybe maybe we just exposed Florida State and they're not that good and we'll find that out. And then they should have beat Duke just a few minutes ago as we're recording this podcast. Had a, had a one-point lead with 2.8 seconds to go. Cam Reddish three uh, in, the, in the last second gives Duke the win. And the Blue Devils escape with a two-point win in Tallahassee. Uh, so, yeah, maybe I, maybe I need to take that back. Maybe that one over Florida State was as impressive as it was. Florida State looked pretty good today. Zion Williamson didn't play the second half. He looked like he was healthy enough to play the second half, just did not play the second half after having his eye scratched in the first half. Uh, but Florida State, uh, you know, got to the basket. They had a lot of dunks, a lot of layups, and uh, really, you know, Duke defensively had a, had a struggle uh, to contain that Florida State team. But, but yeah, I mean, that's – the ACC topsy turvy. I'll, I'll mention this, and then we'll talk generally, Scott. I thought I knew. What, I thought I knew something about North Carolina. They went to NC State on Tuesday, beat NC State in Raleigh, uh, and then they lose to a Louisville team at home in Chapel Hill today by 21. That Louisville team had just lost to Pitt. I don't know what to make sense of anywhere, Scott, in this ACC except that Virginia's pretty good. I think that's what you make of it. That uh, that there is a lot of inconsistency in the ACC, and I think we're going to see that as the season goes on. You know, Louisville, not, this is not a great Louisville team. I've watched them play numerous times this year. They're better than they were last year, um, but not a great Louisville team, and they just manhandled North Carolina tonight. And, um, you know, I watched some of that game, and I will say this, <laughs> um, I'm glad Carolina gave Roy had a con- had that contract extension. There's no way he finishes that because he is the most disinterested coach. I mean, he's, he's, he's basically just a figurehead on the sideline. Uh, but there is so much inconsistency. How, also, Pitt, Pitt beat NC State today. Actually, so, no, NC State beat Pitt. Oh, it was, it was it, it did beat Pitt today. Yeah. Okay, I, at one time, it was, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, you're right, you're correct on that. But it, again, you know, the, other than the top two, and I think it, I think Duke and Virginia will probably establish themselves as the, clearly the top two teams in the conference. But from there down, you've got you've got a mad scramble. I think you're going to see a lot of 
games this season and what she scratch her head and wonder how this team beat this team at home. I mean, Louisville didn't beat Carolina in Louisville. They beat Carolina in the Dean Bank and impressively, too. So I think as the season progresses, and this is going to be a growing regular season, um, you're going to see a lot of that. And it's, it's going to, as the season gets older, we're not going to be that shocked by it. But, you know, we just keep saying it. You know, Virginia, don't be surprised if we lose some games. Doesn't mean we're going to be less of a team than we were last year. A record may not be that gaudy, but Chris, we just keep we just keep winning. We just, just keep winning. They won 12 games in a row in the ACC on the road. That, that, that's, just, that's just unfathomable in this way. And, and, and a lot of those games, Chris, aren't even close. They're out. Yeah. Yeah, Virginia, of course, there, there's a game Tuesday night, big game uh, with, with Virginia Tech coming to uh, JPJ, and Virginia Tech's a top-ten team, so don't overlook that game. We know that the game next weekend in Durham uh, is is on everybody's radar. College game day will be down in Durham for that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, two top-ten games for Virginia next week. Uh, Virginia Tech having the weekend off because there's 15 teams in the ACC. Somebody needs to have the weekend off, and it's Virginia Tech. So, They'll actually have a few days off. I'm not sure if that's an advantage or not uh, as far as that goes. But, uh, uh, you know, Louisville, that 21-point win at Carolina, I thought after after Tuesday night, that win for Carolina against State uh, in Raleigh, I was ready to anoint them, you know, third. I mean, I know everybody else, we, we did our ACC power poll. We'll do another one on Monday. We do one each week with Jerry Rackham and Scott Rackham joining Scott and I for, for that power poll. Everybody else voted Carolina third. I actually voted Virginia Tech third, and I was ready to say, "Man, how crazy am I?" To, to, you know, after after Carolina beat Carolina State so bad the other night, uh, I missed out on that. You know, I can't believe I put them, uh, you know, put them behind Virginia Tech. Well, you know, Luke May three of fourteen from the field. Carolina thirty four point five percent. They had fourteen turnovers in this game, and Louisville, a team that all of us agreed is a middle of the pack ACC team, just dominating them in Chapel Hill. The worst loss for Roy as a, as a coach in Chapel Hill. Uh, and then, Scott, you, you, you got it wrong in one sense, saying Pitt lost to NC State, but that was at NC State, and Pitt led for a lot of that game. This Pitt team didn't win a game in the ACC last year, so, you know, they beat Louisville this week. They played State tough today. Uh, you know, Florida State again, they've, they've got two losses in ACC play, but they've lost to Duke and Virginia. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I will say, Scott, now we'll, we'll talk more on, I'm sure we'll talk Monday or Tuesday, probably Monday, we'll try to talk about uh, the UVA-Virginia Tech game more in depth. But I'll say now, uh, no no overlooking Virginia Tech. This is the best Virginia Tech team that Buzz Williams has had by far. And uh, that's, you know, they, and of course they beat Virginia in Charlottesville last year. Uh, I'm sure the guys in the Virginia locker room remember that. And, and that's going to be a battle on Tuesday night, uh, Virginia-Virginia Tech. Well, and I, you know, I'm not, Obviously, I'm never going to really be one to get in front of a lot of hand out accolades for Virginia Tech, but I will say this. They are a good team. They, they certainly are. But I think the verdict is still out because I don't think a win at home uh, against Boston College and barely squeaking out a win in Atlanta against a horrible Georgia Tech team, I don't, I don't think that they have – what you would call really be truly tested yet. So, you know, if you're a Hokie fan, you'll find out real quick just how good your team is. And that doesn't mean that they get their heads handed to them um, to you tonight that they're not a good team. But I think, obviously, the Virginia game in Charlottesville is their first real, true test of the season. What I would say is, I mean, you look. One thing about this Tech team that uh, I don't think people pay attention, especially Virginia fans, don't pay attention. I'm sure a lot of Virginia fans don't watch a lot of Virginia Tech basketball, and you won't until Tuesday night. Uh, this Virginia Tech team is is ranked 21st nationally in adjusted defensive efficiency by KenPom.com, and what that means is, yeah, because Virginia's ranked second, familiarly, you know, second in adjusted efficiency, uh, a, a defensive efficiency which is, you know, in the same area you're always in, first, second, third, something like that. But Virginia Tech last year was 70th. Two years ago was 156th. This is a team that now wins with defense. That that Georgia Tech win as, you know, it was 52-49. Yeah, ugly win, you want to say. They won. They, they, they won a game where they only scored 52 points on the road in the ACC. And, you know, when you don't have your A uh, 
offensive game, when you have probably a D-minus offensive game and you still win on the road in the ACC, I don't care who you're beating. If you beat somebody on the road in the ACC scoring 52 points, that's something. Now, they are still, even with that awful effort, they're still eighth in the country adjusted offensive efficiency-wise. And so, and, and, and I remember that game plan last year, uh, Buzz Williams, the second game, because the first game down in Blacksburg, Virginia won by 26, and, uh, you know, it wasn't even that close. Uh, 78-52 win for Virginia in that January game last year down in Blacksburg, but the game in February, what impressed me about what Buzz Williams did was he played this weird zone defense. Uh, it was almost like he, all five of his guys had their foot touching the paint. He dared Virginia to shoot threes. Virginia shot 38 threes in that game, only made 13 of them. And, uh, you know, he did all that to win by one in overtime, but he, he put his team in position to win the game. And uh, I've watched this Virginia Tech team play. They can play defense. They can score points. I hate that little kid, Justin Robinson, because he gets all these cheap foul calls to go his way, but he gets them. And uh, so that's going to be – I mean, they're going to ugly it up as much as they can. And, uh, you know – so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna certainly overlook this team. They they might not be battle tested, but but uh, they don't they don't need to be battle tested going to Charlottesville. This is a game for them to to get the national attention. They're they're ranked number seven in the coaches poll. Uh, there are certainly people out there who say they're overrated in that sense. They want to prove it. They want to prove that it's legit. And uh, and they have that win last season in JPJ to uh, to give them confidence going in. They're not gonna be scared by Virginia like some teams might be. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be a hell of a game Tuesday night. Yeah, I, and I, I agree. This is a, it's certainly a good Virginia Tech team, but I, I, I'm, as I said, I, I will get a much better indication of how good they are. I, and, uh, you know, I can't imagine Tony, you know, he's looked at that film, the players have looked at that film that game last year. Uh, you know, whatever happened. In that game, I, I kind of feel like they're going to use that as a little, little motivation. Um, that they're not going to let that happen again. I, again, I, I'm not saying to Virginia Tech is a bad team or not a not a good team. I don't think they're a top ten team yet. They'll have a chance to prove me wrong Tuesday night. I think that right now where we are in at this stage of the season, we're not even halfway through the ACC. Uh, for this team to lose, we're going to have to have a really we're going to have to play bad on both ends of the floor. Both ends of the floor. And I don't see that happening against Tech. Um, you know, I'm not sure I'm doing out there, the opponent out there is what to do today. This can be you know, making us have a bad game on both ends of the floor. I don't know that you need to have a bad game on both ends. Uh, I think, you know, What's, what would worry me would be a, a start like we had against Clemson. And, and this is any game, not just Virginia Tech. I mean, we play two top ten teams next week. Um, Virginia Tech at home, Duke on the road. Uh, you know, if, if there's another stretch, and we've, we've seen these stretches, even with this offensive team, and this Virginia offensive team, so I mentioned Virginia Tech's efficiency ratings. I should mention Virginia's. Uh, second in the nation, I, meant, I said adjusted defensive efficiency. What you don't know about this Virginia team, uh, and a lot of people don't pay attention to because, you know, generally speaking, there's not a lot of points on the board today, just just 63 if you want to say it that way. Sixth in the nation, of adjusted offensive efficiency. So it's it's as good as a team. Now, the best team that Tony had at the end of a season uh, was that 2016 team, the Elite Eight team that lost to Syracuse in the, in the regional final. That, that team was ranked eighth at the end of that season in adjusted offensive efficiency. You think about that team. That was Malcolm Brogdon. That was Anthony Gill, Mike Toby, London Parentes. That was a pretty good team. This team, at least right now, is better uh, in terms of adjusted offensive efficiency than that team was. And they're just as good uh, uh, defensively you know, defensively as they've, as they've been in recent years. So, uh, but that said, you know, we've seen those stretches. We saw the stretch today against Clemson. There was a, a, a lengthy stretch. Uh, you know, Virginia had a 12 point lead first half and, and let Clemson get back in it, had a couple of shots to take a lead in, in the second half. Um, you know, you can't afford, no, this, this is Clemson. I'm not going to knock Clemson. They made a sweet 16 last year, but you have a stretch like that against Virginia tech. You have a stretch like that against Duke. Uh, they're going to make you pay more than Clemson will make you pay. So, uh, so that said, uh, I mean, next week's going to be a fun week. Uh, you got Virginia Tech, you got Duke, uh, two top ten teams, rivals in different ways. Certainly, uh, for a Virginia fan, this is all you ask for is the opportunity to play these kind of big games, and uh, and and we've got these coming up. Uh, but yeah, that's it's I, Virginia's going to be tested too. I don't think there's any question. Virginia's going to have some 
some, some work to do next week to, uh, to to get through that. Well, it's, it's you know this is life in the ACC. We you know it's not easy. We have a tough game Tuesday night. I hope you know the team right now. Um, well, Jack's got a weekend off, and we're our guys are trying to fight their way back to a snowstorm again to get back to Charlottesville. So what I'm saying, the plane has already delayed leaving South Carolina, so hopefully they get home safely without too much difficulty and can get some rest. Short turnaround, but they they did a great job playing in Boston Wednesday night. Short turnaround and having to go as far almost as far south to play and. Um, uh, yeah, and they're, they're, they're battle, Virginia's battle tested, and uh, it's going to be a great week in Virginia basketball. Um, you know, it's, it's, fun. it's a fun time of year. This is, well, Scott and I will get back together on Monday with more specifics on Virginia, Virginia Tech, and uh, get you ready for that game on Tuesday. Now, we'll also have our ACC Power Poll. We put that together with uh, the, the folks at jerryratcliffe.com, Jerry Ratcliffe and Scott Ratcliffe. Uh, all the four of us will vote. I'll tally the votes. We'll have our top 15 ACC power poll. Uh, that'll come out uh, during the day, Monday morning, uh, hopefully around lunchtime or so. And um, and then, yeah, we get you ready for some interesting basketball next week with Virginia facing Virginia Tech, Virginia facing Duke. And uh, that's all coming up here on uh, Augusta Free Press. So for Scott German, I'm Chris Graham. We'll sign off for now. And everybody have a great weekend. Wahoo wah.